Welcome to Out of Pocket. I I somehow made it back. My name's Zach. I'm at the crib. What do you got? <laughs> and I'm the Jethro Jenkins. Hey, man, we're happy to have you back. G, I was worried about you, dog. You didn't post a lot. I'm thinking, like, man, is he having too much fun? Uh, That was probably it, <laughs> part of it. I, I didn't want to be... I didn't want to be like too much, the too much guy. So I was just like, I'll take the videos. If there's a good one I see the next day, I'll throw it up. If there's a cool photo I got, I'll throw that up. But I, I just sort of like, you know, I wanted to go out there and kind of just tune out and have a nice time. So I got to do that. Jack, there's a rumor on the also internet like, that, that you cropped us at Timothy Chamolet. What's the story? Chamolet? <laughs> what the, what's his name? Chicklets? So, yeah, so we went. Chickaletta. So I got to go to Neon Carnival, which like, you know, the this year – more than any other year I'd seen is when the, there are so many parties and the, every party has some celebrity performing, but the neon carnival still is the, the hot ticket to get. So after the festival, so we left at like 11 o'clock from the festival, you show up at this party, it's like neon and black lights everywhere. They got carnival rides, open bar, Don Julio, 1942. They just handed my buddy a bottle and he was like walking around the festival, just gunning a bottle of Don How Julio. How much that cost to get in there? Uh, a lot. I think you have a to lot. Be successful. But I think if you can get a sponsor, okay. if you get a sponsor, it, most of the people are in there for free. Got to be successful. So that's like a, f a friend at WME got me and shout out to Carolyn. She's a very talented agent. If you're looking for a new agent, um, uh, I'm just gonna give her that. Is that what kind of snacks? But, what kind of snacks did they have there first? Nachos, churros, burgers. They they had the sliders. They had ribs. It was like all these different food trucks. What kind of burgers though? Uh, impossible burgers or possible burgers? Uh, Joe, I'm just going to say some of the chemicals that I consumed did not have me looking for food, okay? <laughs> Kat and Jaws' dad were trash-talking each other during game two of the Memphis-Minnesota game. Now, didn't they adapt and, like, give each other a hug at the end of game one? They did. So what was the shift tonight, fellas? I, bro, I don't I don't think there was a shift, bro. I think it's just all love. They're just talking shit, you know what I mean? I, I thought it was interesting that they had them <laughs> on there talking for that long. You know what I'm saying? With Chris Haynes, you feel me? Like him trying to go back and forth. That was hilarious. You know what I mean? He was having trouble keeping up. But y'all love it, G. They need to, they need to, let's have them on for a whole show. Let's do a little side segment. Throw Josiah in there. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Twitter live. Seriously. Run that. You can host it, Josiah. I believe now, in you. I mean, I just think, look, it, you know, you hear the, the rumors and the myths about black dads not being present in their kids' lives. We got two black fathers that are out here, 10 toes down on the ground in Memphis, Tennessee. Showing love to their kids. Shout out Chris Haynes, too, out there looking debonair and dapper. But it's, it's refreshing to see, man. It's great to see that these dudes obviously have this playful, you know, you know, thing going on where they rock with each other. Obviously, they both want their sons to win, though. Sure. So at the end of the day, we, we giggling on the camera, but there's a lot of shit talking, I feel like, on the group chat. And shout out to Jaw's daughter, too, who was hitting it after the game. She, you know, she, she really pushing Riley Curry. You know, to that next level. She's that new age, new wave Riley Curry out here. She's going to be a media darling. You said she darling. got Riley at the pain, G? She you know, she's, the but she absorbed, she absorbed everything that Riley taught her, okay. like the foundation, them crumbs, and really followed in those footsteps to really you know, just be the next cute NBA daughter out, uh, out there really getting it flares out. But, you know, series tie 1-1, this thing is still interesting. I, I'm just more sad that they put this game on NBA TV. I feel like that was a slap in the face to everybody who loves hoops. We wanted this on primetime viewing, you know. Shout out to NBA TV. They have I will pander. They have given me a bag before, but I will pander. <laughs> me as well. I will pander. Can I ask you guys, did you ever see any dads at like high school or AAU games get into it? Yeah, all the time. Um, yeah. I mean, all the yeah, time. Right. Any good stories? A, the AAU dad thing, phenomenon. Everybody thinks like LeVar Ball like kicked it off, but it's been going on in gyms all over. Dads coming at each other. Really, it's the dad. It's like the, the AAU dad that doesn't know that their son is trash. Like, I was still pretty good in high school, so I didn't really experience that. But just, you know, <laughs> they finally has to come to grips with it as all these other kids are getting scholarships. And then them, them as AAU dad have nothing to talk about. But like, oh, he might juco or he, you know, he might go to prep school for a year or whatever. <laughs> but just seeing that kid not getting burned. But no, there's, there's, that's the thing. The, like, the, the black AAU dad is one of the most phenomenal species and creatures on the planet. Just... <laughs> Frolicking, Jim <laughs> complaining about gym fees, parking, <laughs> trying to pilfer snacks, trying to steal gear. You know, Josh Dad seems like the type of dad was like stealing shorts, like from other places. So he has stuff to rock and look sweet in. <laughs> Aunt Edwards, some news came out this week. Anthony Edwards, his dog is named Anthony Edwards Jr. All right, I just got a dog, and I gotta say, I'm fucking. What's your dog's name, Zach? I did not name my dog Zach Schwartz. You should have went Zach, Zach, Zach. Yeah, shoulda, shoulda. You feel me? Exactly. For promo. Add to the brand. Add to the brand. To the brand. <laughs> you got? Did your dog have his own uh, social media yet? 
No, he won't be getting that. I don't have time. I, I don't have time to do a, uh, an account for him. All right, I I feel like I'm fucking up on my own accounts. All right, you know. Like that's so. the weirdest shit to me on the planet when people have like accounts for their animals, but then they try to talk in the voice of the animal as if the dog would post that, as if they could even conjure up what that dog is really actually thinking inside and what it wants to say. Like maybe that dog is more of an emoji dog. He don't really like to put <laughs> words up in there. Maybe he's more, you know, yeah. quotes, Bible verses, whatever. But they be trying to talk like their dog and then will respond to other accounts in like dog voices but really they're thirsty for each other trying to howl there's like a Bro. weird phenomenon that goes on juju does that juju smith schuster does that for his dog <laughs> he runs his dog bougie's instagram account and comments like on other dog igs and he's i know for a fact he's done it to like get in the dms of girls like oh like you're yeah, juju bougie, you like, don't bougie. have to do that again dms you're a fucking millionaire kyrie irving fined fifty thousand dollars for flipping off the people of Boston, even what something a lot of people would have loved would love to do. My thing with the way he did it, it was so kind of cringe in the way he did it. Like you're gonna get fined 50k. Go hard, put that thing up proud, and look the person right in the eyes. Okay, because because doing this behind your head is something a six year old would do. And it was like, bro, you're gonna get a 50k. If, if 50K is out the bank already, get your money's worth. Look them in the eyes right here. Fuck you. Tell, like, anyone in Boston, money's worth. Get your money's worth. Like he did the double finger, though. He did the double fuck you. I, I bro. Like this. <laughs> that was a child's way of flipping someone off. That's a fact. I've never actually done the double fuck you, and I haven't seen that since maybe, like, I don't know, sixth grade, you know, baby baseball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yes, yes. Look, if you want to get people at games, you got to, you have to move silently, right? Fart, fart on that first row, wave mm. it, wave it into them. Dust there's it. there's different things oh. you can do if you want to, you know, because like you said, the double fingers behind the back, no, like rubbing balls and high fiving fans, just simple things. Stink palming, if you really want to get elaborate, <laughs> down and dirty, then <laughs> then d distribute the dap to all the hater fans. They'll never know it's hit them. Did you I did mean, you see it, how excited the fans were after he double flipped them off? Like, those fans are, they're different, G. You know what I mean? Like, don't give them the, the you know, the, the don't, uh, they, they were ha they were happy to see the double, the double, you know, fuck you, and they see the 50K fine. That's exactly what they wanted. You know what I'm saying? You gave them exactly what they needed. You know what I'm saying? And they took that W at the end. Cold. The Cold uh, Nets went, went from going like, you know, 4-1, 4-2 in the series to now they not, might not win the shit. And really all it took was that one moment, a Jason Tatum spin layup that could have completely mm -hmm. turned the tide. And we'll see if it comes back to bite him in the ass or not. Uh, all right. The, the thing I want to ask you is, this, do you disagree uh, with the fine amount? I we knew he was getting I mean, we, we talked about this on, on a previous show. <laughs> we knew he was breaking bread. Yeah, it was a noble, honorable. And we can all sit here and pretend like, oh, we, we hope he doesn't get fined. You know the league is breaking bread to send a message. But, you know, city of New York, Brooklyn, they got to pay that. Go ahead and take care of that. Let Kyrie live as a thank you and courtesy for coming to play for your team. <laughs> he dropped 40, man. They should have paid for that off the strength of that. You know saying. what I'm saying? But, like, yeah. dog, like, 50? I'm surprised it's only 50. I knew minimum it would be 50. So I'm, I'm happy he only got the minimum. But uh, I get exactly why he would respond that way. 20, is it worth it, people, though? Yeah, uh, you think it was worth it? Fitting, bro, I lost like a twenty dollar bill. I think it might be a fifty dollar bill at a Wiener Schnitzel when I was a little kid, and I, I never forgot that moment. So I can only imagine somebody coming at me for fifty <laughs> racks. I'll think about that money every single day for the for rest sure. of my life. <laughs> for sure. No matter how much like, I get I, back, I, I find ten million dollars on the ground. I lost that fifty. <laughs> how much did he lose from the anti vax Well, that's a good point. So that's not even he he he's tricked it's off money all season, so he's not even worried. Yeah. Um, he just happened to be getting right. paid again, yeah. probably. Shit, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. seriously. 50k Listen less all them game checks. Right, right. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Ben Simmons uh has been cleared to return to contact practices. Steve Nash is unsure of when he'll make his debut. First question, should Ben Simmons return for this series? We act like he, he's getting into contact practice like the, the Nets are just practicing every day. And, like, they're literally in the midst of a playoff series fighting for their playoff lives. And now he can just play pickup. Um, yeah, because they just need him to, to play defense. They don't need any bucket getting whatsoever. Just lock up. 
you know, need to throw you on Tatum, throw you into the fire. But that's a, a lot to ask a human being to take a whole year off and then go get their fellow light skinned to get their ass busted by another light skinned dude after not playing even, you know, not a near minute. That's that's a lot. He's playing four on four. He hasn't even played <laughs> five on five. <laughs> the extra guy Why the yet? fuck are we talking about this man? Keep all of that shit. I don't want to hear another Ben Simmons thing until he's ready to fucking play. And if Suit he's up. ready to play, yep. put his ass out there. Like Josiah said, mm. bro, all we need is for him to play D. You know, they got bucket getters out there. You don't have to worry about that. Come in here and strap up. That's yep. all we need from you. But you just play a 4 on 4, I don't give a fuck about 4 on 4. You know what I mean? <laughs> Pelicans won tonight 25, 125 to 114. Former Laker Brandon Ingram scored 37, and Devin Booker set out the entire fourth quarter with a hamstring injury. Well, I mean, boys, are, are we worried for the Suns? How, how? I mean, give me your thoughts. Just because the Devin Booker thing, this shit's so unfair if he's out. I mean, it's tough, man. Anytime you have a, a player of that magnitude, you never want to see uh, one of your light-skinned soldiers get injured in the heat of battle. But I think I can speak for all of us. No, nobody really give a shit about this Pelican Sun series, man. It's, we it's, don't care. We flip the games. Put them on NBA TV. No disrespect to Phoenix. Great place. Weather's a little janky. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Rex Chapman, if you're watching. But and hopefully, obviously, you never want to see a guy go down with injury, especially a player at an MVP level like D. Book. So hopefully, he gets his stuff right. But I don't even care who wins this series. Yeah. I mean, I think the Suns are going to win the series. I think the. Pelicans have no fucking chance of hell if they're, if, they're, if they're healthy. But the Suns ain't here to win round one. The Suns are trying to win a chip, and they can't do that without D-Book. You feel me? That's just not going to happen. So um, Everybody talked about how Chris Paul changed it, and they had him looking like he was the MVP. Talking about him being the MVP last year. Dog, Booker's the best player on that fucking team. There's no way around that shit, you know? So him not being there is rough. But, I mean, I don't, like, like, you know, just, I don't give a fuck about this series, you know? I mean, we went live before the motherfucker ended for a reason, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. A second watching of the uh, – spending, me spending a second watching this series is a second too much. Fuck out of here. <laughs> I agree. I, I had no interest in this one. When I when I looked at the schedule for tonight, I was like, okay, I know the slot where I got to go run a quick – like a couple quick errands. <laughs> Sorry, and congrats right, to the like, Pelicans. He's not moving the needle. Congrats. Uh, uh, Devin Booker did dap up the baby after hitting a fadeaway. And I want to ask you guys, what's the coolest thing to happen to you at a sporting event? Uh, one time, my dad played for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, it's 89-90 season. He was there for about 10 games. Uh, and got the opportunity to meet the second or arguably third greatest player in NBA history. Bulls came to town. Uh, as we all know, MJ, it was a fan of my dad. who was also initial to MJ. After the game, we got to walk in the locker room, hang out with Mike. He actually autographed a stat sheet, and I looked at him, I said, you know, you're not going to be the greatest player ever, but one day, you could be top two or three. I don't know who, I don't know who's going to, I don't know who's going to take you off that throw. Maybe a gentleman from Akron, Ohio, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. But no, getting to meet Jordan in real life, just the level of swag and sweetness that he carries, and everybody around the locker room is just lingering, trying to see him, and, you know, you know, male groupies and media types and all types of things going on, but to get to hang with him for a little bit and talk, I think it's probably my coolest moment. Bro, I'm regular as shit, dog. I grew up in a place that did not have professional sports. G. I'm not gonna talk to you mm-hmm. about, you know what I'm saying, my you know, middle school baseball and basketball days. So the coolest mm-hmm. thing for me was just going, going to professional. I've been in like three of the motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? I did see Bron live when he played for the Cavs, that was cool. But yeah, that's probably the best thing that's happened to me is seeing Bron live while he was still Bron. I saw him with the Lakers, he got the uncle legs now. He, he yeah. was, It's incredible, right? It's incredible seeing what he's doing, not having the same athletic ability. He put up 40, you know what I'm saying? But, th- you know, yeah. this th- seeing him with the Cavs being the full Bron was cool. Um, I get to work uh, a couple years ago. I get to work at a Super Bowl, and the Seahawks were in it. They lost the Patriots. She was devastating. But just getting to be – that close to a game of a team that I've cared about my entire life. Like I, I went to a Seahawks practice once when I was a little kid and like uh, even getting to go and just be that close was incredible. I remember obviously that interception happens on the goal line. And I remember watching after the game, Doug Baldwin was just one of the Seahawks receivers just walking around the tunnel, holding a ball with all of his pads still on. And this is like an hour after the game. You know in Saving Private Ryan where the dude's arm gets blown off and he's just like walking up the beach holding it? Damn. Sure where to go. Damn. That's what you compared that's, it to? That's what, Doug Bald, that's what Doug Baldwin looked like. And I went up to him and I was like, hey, man, y'all will be back. Don't worry. You got a good core. Like, it'll be fine. 
they would not make it back. So what what, what did he say Doug, back to you? We should have handed it to Marshawn. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. Y'all coastal but, elites, bro. Y'all got these coastal elite stories, bro. My country ass <laughs> growing up in St. Louis. I ain't get to see none of this shit, dog. <laughs> right. it's pretty Pete good. Carroll said Caucasian back like three years with that decision. That's a fact. That is a fact. That is a fact. About a good three. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the Nuggets are down 2-0. Jokic was ejected last night after receiving two texts. Have the Warriors exposed Jokic and the Nuggets? I mean, they ex- I moreover, has, has Draymond Green exposed Jokic? They exposed Draymond. that Jamal Murray's not playing. I mean, in, in MP, I mean, what <laughs> what were we expecting? Like the the Nuggets are, aren't aren't hot boo boo. Obviously, they got the you know who should be the MVP on their squad, but you got a, a Warriors team that once again they're getting like janky shit off like the Lakers used to do back in the day. But now they got the Steph Clay Jordan Poole obviously playing like he wants somebody's money. Andrew Wiggins, somebody who have to give up that bag so he could get his. But you know, this is just a squad that looks hungry, looks ready. And, you know, definitely I can see them making the finals and losing to the Nets, the Celtics, the Bucks in five. Marcus Thompson said that if you go based upon, like, you know, January until now and you don't look at the past, he said that Jordan Poole looks like the best player on this team, right? And I'm, sure. I'm, when I'm watching them the last first two games, it sounds like yeah. Jordan – like, I'm, I'm like, this is Jordan Poole and the Warriors. You know what I'm saying? Like – the way he's been playing, insane. and I cannot believe he's as good as he is. I knew he was going to no, be can't. good. I, 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 I had an, I, I mean, I thought he would be solid, like a solid, you know, you know, you know, dude off the bench. I didn't think a thirty ball, back to back thirty balls in playoff no. games. I mean, he is, no, he is a dog it, it, on both ends of the court too. How many times did we see Jordan Poole get steals and start the fast break? Oh. The defensive thing I didn't. Really They're scary. Use. They uh, they remind me of them of them Warriors that I hated watching that I hated on <laughs> for all them years. Yeah, they look good. I still think the Suns uh, healthy gonna dog the ass, but you know what I'm saying. Really? I, I think healthy. The Suns healthy. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I, I just, don't know, bro. John, I. They're that I good. They're that I mean, good. That three G lineup that they tried it out. The t- the two PTSD. To five whatever we they got call it of PTSD. it. PTSD. Uh, I was just like, put that right into my arm. Like, I was like, that shit was beautiful. It was some of the prettiest basketball I'd ever seen. And people were like, was it was it more fun to watch than the KD Warriors? And I was like, yes, in a way, because they were moving around in ways that they didn't have to do with KD. Because at the end of the day, with KD, they could just throw it to him at the elbow. Bucket. KD will go to work. KD's it's getting a bucket no matter how he wants. Not to say Jordan Poole can't do that. I mean, he I think he will at some point. He can to a degree. Be watching him There's with no the ball, KD, though, is but just, I hear what you're saying. Like the around the wrap the around the back pass he threw. To, Jordan just, Poole got those three sixty ways. Though. Shout out to James Wozniak. It pains me to do this, but shout out to James Wozniak. Called it all along, saying he was going to be great. I, I thought you know there was a ceiling on it because at Michigan he wouldn't put these games together like this. So, uh, but shout out to James. Shout out to the Warriors. Good, good on them. No uh, shout out to James. He I, got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> a broken clock is right that. twice a day. No, nah, I mean, but shout out to that Warriors so, team. As much as we like to hate them, it was great, you know, seeing the demise of Oracle back in 2019 when NBA Twitter brought the whole crew together, really just to witness right. the Warriors' demise live, grabbing shirts, trying to break into Steve Nash's suite and steal more T-shirts. Such a beautiful moment. Dude, Draymond looks so good, G. He made everything hard for Jokic. He made the MVP look nothing like a fucking MVP. A dude that, you know, affects the game in every way, who Jokic, you know, which is Jokic. And Draymond made it yeah. everything seem impossible to him. And being undersized, too. You know, like, dog, Draymond, he like a Hall of Famer last night. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, I, you see why how important he is, truly is to that team. Watching him turn the screws with Jokic <sighs> is why he is – Arguably, you got to put him in the conversation for top three all-time trash talkers at this point because Jokic is com- was completely out of that game. Between, between, I don't know if we've ever seen two better trash talkers between GP two and and uh, Draymond. I mean, can you imagine just at all times there's someone just in your ear talking shit to you? Do you know how fucking annoying that is? Slap man's on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll be all right. And then Draymond, just keep, <laughs> Draymond keeps bumping him and clapping in his ear. And I mean, like, Jokic, you should know the moment you turn to go walk after him, Draymond sees that. It's like a shark seeing blood in the water. And he's going to come and come and just 
and that was it. You knew you knew that game was ending with Jokic getting tossed, and I'm glad he didn't hurt anyone. You Where know? are Jokic's brothers like, at? Like, okay, they're not not running no phase. Let's not speak uh, them up, please. I'm just saying. Yeah. I am you got a bunch of please. You got a bit, bunch of big Samoans. You got a bunch door, of big please. Bay Areans that are ready for that fade. Ready to ready to defend Steph's <laughs> honor. Ready to defend Draymond's honor. Ready to fight for Jordan Poole. Not playing that East Bay. Taking Bart. From all corners of the bay, ready for whatever phase. So, mm-hmm. Jokic brothers don't want it with the bay. Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> hey, I don't know about that, Bubba. <laughs> you feel me? Them some uh, big boys. All right. I, I got I got two award questions for you guys. Okay, first of all, if if they get bounced, if the Nuggets get bounced out of this, do you think? Now, obviously, this doesn't affect voting. I'm pretty sure votes have already been submitted, but. Does this affect your input on Jokic being no. MVP if they get knocked out in no. the first round? No? No, okay. it is what it is. That makes sense. All right, second one. Uh, Jordan Poole, who we were just praising, obviously didn't get uh, as a, didn't get in as a finalist for most improved. Who do you think should win that award, and was Jordan a snub from that list? Yeah, for sure. I mean, who, who's on there? Ja? Uh, who are the names first of the Ja? Shouldn't even be Finalists on are Ja, Garland, and uh, yeah, right. that's that's what everybody like. Ja, how you? You were second overall pick, Chief. You what? What do you got to improve from? Like literally, you you were. We got you to do this, but probably Garland is what he's been able to do, elevating his game to that level. Bucket getter, making Cleveland relevant again. Yeah. I think for that you deserve you know a statue. Jordan. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a hell of a point. We talking about Cleveland mm-hmm. again. I can't believe it. But Cleveland Jordan is Poole only from, yeah. right. He went from twelve points a game to like 18, 19 points a game now. Like 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 uh, Marcus Thompson said, he's been the best player the second half of the Warriors season. Uh, yeah. Wiggins was a was an all star, an all star starter, and Jordan Poole's numbers are better than Wiggins, bro. He is the most improved player in the NBA. It's, 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 I mean, yeah. it's ridiculous that he wasn't even a finalist. He should have won it. Yeah. The idea of putting Ja in there is so weird to me. Because it's like they want to give Ja an MVP. They, they don't quite feel right about doing it, obviously. It's just like who, who looked at Ja last year and was like, yeah, that guy's far off from being what he is now. I don't know. I, it's impressive what he's doing. I'm not at all here to take away from that. But I, I didn't feel like at any point I was sitting looking at Ja's game like, oh, there's – so much to be improved upon. Like, it was so clear he's going to be a superstar, so people are stupid. Jerry West is demanding a retraction over how he's being portrayed in the HBO series Winning Time. Isn't this the most Winning Time Jerry West bullshit to do, though? You know what I mean? Like, look, bro, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I, I saw a bunch of people responding like, bro, it's a dramatization, whatever. Like, yeah, you can say that when you're on the outside looking in and you ain't the motherfucker getting clowned <laughs> and made to look like an <laughs> egotistical psychic. Man. And, and it's tough because you, you take all this kind of stuff with a grain of salt, obviously, knowing that it, it, it's, it's dramatized and there's going to be certain concessions that are made by the writers to help push and tell the story. It's tough because I've lived in that world. I know a lot of people involved in the show. I also know a lot of the characters in the show. And, you know, you look at a guy like Kareem or whatever, like, you know, I was talking to my older brother about this. Like, Kareem might be surly or an asshole to, like, regular people. Kareem always shows love to us. Like, I've never seen that side of Kareem. It's really just a matter of if you come with, like, hey, how's the weather up there jokes? Or, like, can I get a high five? Like, motherfucker, get the fuck away from me. I'm, I'm out here yeah. Kareeming. What the fuck you want? <laughs> I got that side of it because I was like, hi, Kareem. Can I get a picture? Is like a little kid at a Dodgers game. And he's like, nah, man, I, I got to go. And then I could tell he felt bad. So he took the picture with me, but he's blurred in the picture because he's literally walking away as it's being taken. He wanted no part of it. He did give me the time, but he was not super nice about it. We it gave you the picture, bro. What you know what I'm saying? 100. But blurry. I, I got no ill will. Not emotion. Kareem, it did Kareem knows that the only athlete. I said so Kareem knows about photography. He knows he can't be moving while the photo is being taken. <laughs> I, I, bro, what's what's interesting about that is nobody's happy with what's going on. Like Magic's not happy, you know what I'm saying? Like nobody's happy with how they've been depicted, which makes me think, you know, a lot of it's true. <laughs> I don't know why I feel that way, but it, it feels like you know, it, there's there's a, people are, it's getting under people's skins because you know it, it's yeah. it's a way that they're being depicted that they didn't want, not, not and it doesn't feel necessarily false. And maybe that's why they're having a big issue too, because like you know, Desai said. It's supposed to be a dramatization, but it doesn't feel like it. No. Joe, I mean, do you know, because the, the the one that came off is, and surprised me sort of the most was Chick Hearn, 
Was he kind Ooh. of an asshole? Wow. Look, what, that, what he, what he said to... Uh, piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, that, I'm just yeah, going to keep it real. particular term he used in order to describe a particular person's voice, that's crazy. So look, uh, got the chance to meet Chick Hearn one time in my life. I was probably like 10, 11 years old. We were at the Fest Parker uh, Red Line in uh, Santa Barbara. Saw Chick in his boo at breakfast. Rolled up on him. Chick couldn't have been nicer. Autographs. Told him my dad, you know, played for the Clippers. He definitely offered his condolences. Uh, you know, but but all around good dude. So it, it's tough again because you know things that you see in the way they're projected on this show and portrayed. It's like in the locker room. It's like even the Kobe Shaq years. Like yeah, they were going at each other, but these motherfuckers are winning championships. So right, you know right, they yeah. might be talking shit. With, but this is the thing you see at every workplace. People coming at you, you know, being bitter, being short, being snippy with each other. But at the end of the day, they're going out and getting rings, and that's what it takes to be champions. We're seeing now Scottie Pippen and MJ. No matter what the teams are, nobody's ever going to just speak glowingly about whoever the star player of that squad was they all got a little asshole in them and that's what it takes to be great so i think looking at this thing it's, it's crazy because you see every single guy you know the way you know it, you know some of the stories and not getting to see them actually like you know dramatized is a uh, it's an interesting curious thing but i understand where jerry west is coming from i don't think he's gonna win the lawsuit unfortunately but if this is an agenda to get the logo changed i'm all for it <laughs> I'm uh, all for yeah. I'm all for the agenda. Yeah. So if this is what it is, if this with the, the writing team behind trying to get that logo changed, kudos to them. Who I really feel bad for is you know Cookies, you know the boyfriend that followed Magic. You know what I mean nobody even knew he existed. And, <laughs> you know he was he selling busted. shoes. You know what I mean. <laughs> all we, the only thing we know about him, he's got his ass bust. You know what I mean. And Magic made him look. Like, you know, like less of a man in front of his lady. That's the only thing we know about this dude. He, I mean, I think he got did the worst out of everybody. They could have left that part out. I'd be mad as hell if I was him watching this shit. All right, that's the show. Appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to comment on the video if you want more from us, if you want to sit on other topics. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll be back with a bunch of these throughout the week, uh, all through the playoffs. You guys got anything you want to say on your way out? Black Lives Matter. I'm the Jethro Jenkins. Y'all be cool. Be safe out here. You feel me? Hehehehe <laughs>